this computer. Thank you, computer. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your guest, Michael. No, I'm, you know what? I am a guest in your ears. <laughs> That's true today. And it's been true every time you've listened to this show. Uh, so on behalf of all the Bigfoot Collectors Club, we thank you for letting us into your ear house, as well as your eye house. If you're watching this episode over on the Patreon, BCC, the other side. Um, I'm your host, Michael McMillan. Back with me this week is your other host, Bryce Johnson, <clears throat> and our super producer, Riley Bray. We've there missed we are. you boys. Reunited, and it feels so good. We uh, and and if you're watching this, you can see that we have a guest sitting here. We're gonna get to him real quickly, Mr. Guest. Just sit and look like the alien space wizard you are. <laughs> 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 we'll get to you as quick as possible. Welcome back, boys. Uh, I don't know where you were. You were keeping secrets from me all week, so I don't know what happened. I told yeah. the listeners that Riley was playing music to the cosmos on top of a mountain and that you were off looking for Bigfoot someplace. Bryce, that sounds but, about um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that pretty much sums it up. I think Good. so. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, last I checked, it was still summer and wet, hot aliens. Summer two. summer abduction rolls on as the days grow hotter. Uh, mm -hmm. We put out an APB on UFO L file stories. You guys sent them into Bigfoot Collectors Club at gmail.com. And today we are going to read them with one of our favorite reoccurring guests or recurring guests. I, 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 I'm a guest star. I should know these terms on a lot of shows. Um, but before we dive into your UFO stories, we have a little clubhouse keeping to attend to. We want to thank. Oh, by the way, I am so proud of you guys listening. Uh, all of you. All you club scouts who have written in with five star reviews on Apple Podcasts, oh boy, thank you. If we reach 1,000 five star reviews, we will record the long dreamed of BCC jet ski special. And my club scouts, we are at 850 oh, five wow. star reviews. That's amazing. We're so close. We're so close. That's amazing. I, I can almost we... taste the jet ski backwash <laughs> in my mouth. Yeah. Should we go to, we got to go tubing. Oh, we'll clearly <laughs> have a jet ski special without tubing. That just, yeah, strange. we have to do it. Um, So I think we started this off uh, somewhere around 500, maybe below 500. So you guys are kicking ass at getting these five. Wow. Star reviews in. We That's are incredible. really close. If you guys push, 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 we can make this officially happen by summer's end. So please do it. Listen, we got this week, we got next week, and then the week after that is the season finale of Wet Hot Alien Summer 2 Summer Abduction. Let's get those 1,000 star reviews done by then. Come on, I know we can do it. And then we Let's can announce it. that we, we can announce that it's happening. Um, and if you do give us a five-star review, we might read it on the show like this one. The Bryce is going to read you right now. Oh my gosh. Panic, panic mode. <laughs> Bryce's headphones weren't working. Uh, it's in my email, right? Yeah, of course it is. No, it's in your text. It's in my text. Okay. Hold on. Hang on there, kiddos. You okay. Go. Here we From go. Your pal, Michael McMillan. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Not the big boys collect. You know how many no. Bigfoot group texts I have? It's, it's not, it's not good. It's a problem. Here we go. Better than a balloon. Five stars. Better than a balloon. Better than swamp gas. Better than a bear walking on its hind legs. Better than a sand hill crane. Better than a hole punch cloud. Better than pareidolia. Jet ski special exclamation point. I love this one. This is so great. Yeah. It's better than all that, Shaz. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's amazing. That's so uh, good. Thank guys. you, uh, Barrow Stone. God bless you. <laughs> A crystal collector, perhaps. Yeah, um, maybe. So, of course, our reviews are just only one way you can support the show. You can send us a one-time pledge over at buymeacoffee.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club or subscribe to our Patreon, BCC, The Other Side, the parallel dimension of the Bigfoot Collectors Club, where you can enjoy three to five bonus episodes every month, plus 
our entire backlog of 157 episodes. Mm -hmm. And that it doesn't even include our special video episodes like the mm -hmm. one we're recording right now. So that's only five bucks a month. I mean, that's better than a streaming service, if you ask yeah. me. And yeah. I it's like it's like Elvis Presley. All his best songs are on the B side. <laughs> that's right. Not that our songs on the A side aren't A plus, but we got a lot Neither. going on over there. You Same know what I mean? Elvis. Elvis is you know A side I mean. kicks ass. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We're exactly. Elvis. We're motherfucking Elvis here, guys. Basically. Um, yeah. And a I w which Elvis are we, though? Are we like late Elvis? Are we Vegas Elvis? Or are we you know what? We're a little bit of 69 comeback special Elvis. We're also late 70s Aloha from Hawaii Elvis. We, we, you know, we, we're, we're kind of each, each one of us represent a certain special Elvis. Yeah. I I want to be Elvis dancing with Anne Margaret in like a okay like yeah your your musical movie. film Elvis yeah and and sure. Mystic Dylan since you're the coolest you get to be uh, late seventies Elvis uh, when, when when all he sang was his spirituals and country so uh, <laughs> that was the best that's my favorite Elvis so uh, um well anyway uh, if we do reach one thousand Patreons Patreons. Uh, then we will, of course, film Bryce riding a jet ski naked. Um, guys, I hate to tell you, we're not doing as well in that department. Uh, there's only oh like, God. you know, we're only a little over halfway there. Come on, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm there uh, for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm supposed to be there for that too. <laughs> Mystic, Dylan. Mystic Dylan's already signed up for the for the, the Patreon. Like, I started lighting there. candles. <laughs> oh man! All right, I'm ready um so anyway come join us uh at patreon.com slash bigfoot collectors club okay well you you've heard him talk and we've already introduced him our guest today is a witch doctor who co-hosts the witch in the medium podcast with the dayla levine owns a mystical store called the old world symporium or is it emporium it's important emporium right? i i like symp i don't even I guess, think that's a word <laughs> you're thinking symposium yeah symposium yeah. i'm running <laughs> I'm running a uh, a, a wind-up toy symposium where it's both a symposium <laughs> and an emporium. I apologize. The Old World Emporium and has written two books, Candle Magic for Beginners and The Witch's Guide to Manifestation, which is available for pre-order right now. Oh, or yeah. if you want to read it on ebook, you can get it right now. Club Scouts of all timelines, please welcome returning guest mystic dylan yeah thank you that was such a Look great introduction i loved it throne you're sitting on that is gorgeous where are oh, you right now i'm in my shop this is my reading room wow yeah dylan you never cease to amaze for those of you who aren't following mystic dylan on instagram you should because every every picture is better than the next and it's your outfits are incredible. Wherever you are is incredible. And you're oh, always, thank you. It's always so, I always enjoy your uh, Instagram posts. Aw, thank while, you. while we're talking about it right now, where, where what is your Instagram post for people who oh, are listening? It's a Mystic Dylan official. There you go. Go there, yeah, follow Mystic Dylan. There are a few other Mystic Dylans out there. What? what? Yes. And some that claim to, <laughs> there is a Mystic Dylan that says they can cure you of your herpes, your cancer, <laughs> your, your bunions. Oh, <laughs> they, no. they are 100% success, money back guaranteed. Oh, I am not no. that Mystic Wait, Dylan. Wait, I thought we were talking to that Mystic Dylan this whole time. All right, <laughs> oh, everybody, no, we gotta I'm so shut sorry. Shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. Episode Great. What am I going to do with my herpes and bunions then? Yeah. Yeah, great. and actually, my Instagram got hacked. Oh, um, no. Yes, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I had to pay <coughs> uh, money to get it hacked back into because Instagram doesn't do doodly squat to help you. Wow. Um, Did oh, you have to pay the other Mystic Dylan to get you <laughs> no. back in? <laughs> It's no, <laughs> I had to pay. <laughs> I had to pay uh, like Caesar in Turkey to help me. Oh um, my god! Yeah. Why do I feel like Caesar in Turkey was the one who hacked it in the first place? <laughs> uh, well, some other dude in Turkey actually hacked it. But yeah. here's how aggressive they were. I I checked my email, and all of a sudden, some dude is like, "I have your account. I need this money. I'm gonna sell your account." It was crazy. It was it was a crazy 24 hours. Wait, how did you find Caesar to hack that? Yeah. Into your so apparently, all you have to do is Google 
hacker <laughs> for hire. <laughs> wow. I don't know. This all wow. sounds a little fishy to me. <laughs> and then, and then there you go. You know, and he had, he had really good reviews and I had some friends who had used him and uh, there we go because Instagram will not do anything. Not only did this dude hack into my Instagram, he changed my password and email and routed everything to his phone. What? So it's not like I could do this two-step verification bullshit. This is wild. Oh my you know, it was God. crazy. You know? I also hackers hackers for hire and hacker for hire needs to definitely go on the BJ and the Shadow Bats. Uh, oh yeah. Track. No, hacker for hire, yeah, right he's that like down. my new he's my new best friend. That's I a, love it. Mm, maybe a spark. Yeah, maybe a spark has uh, has a spark been ignited between you and Caesar? Um maybe, <laughs> maybe. I don't know because now I'm gonna start selling um Naked Bryce on jet ski candles at the shop. <laughs> Come on, another reason to oh go visit. Oh my god, hacker uh, for hire. Go how on have the you list. been? What are you doing writing all these books and running a store? Are you nuts? Uh, I think so. I think so. And it's not like I have like 80 million employees. I have about like three people who work at the shop. Um, I have two other readers that I trust. And then it's pretty much me. So I do my readings on the weekends. And then like Tuesday through Friday, I'm like boss man. Um, and then I awesome. make candles and I do spell work and we've been going to events and it's it's a lot. And then I'm writing books. I don't know. <laughs> and you're podcasting here when you clearly should be sleeping. And podcasting and podcasting with Adela again. Yeah, yeah um, that's great. Yeah, but it's a lot. I think it's just, to be honest, I was like, why do I do it? And I think in the age of TikTok and like Instagram, I think there's so there's more misinformation on witchcraft. So mm. in my mind, it's like if I get a hold of it and I jump it and I publish my books and I put my stuff out there, I can like, I don't know, maybe combat that in a way. Definitely. Um, cool. So that's just kind of been what that's what I've been up to. So what's the new book about the witch's guide to manifestation? It sounds self explanatory but why don't you uh, unpack it, is. it for us it is uh well essentially i think you know really the book came about um when i was a kid in i was like i think i was like a freshman in high school i remember watching this like terrible documentary on the secret <laughs> and it had like stock image photos mm -hmm. and like everyone was like oh my gosh the secret and everyone was so obsessed with this book um, and then I read it and like, I think it's one of your like initiations to being like spiritually woke. You have to read the secret. And I remember reading the secret and I was like, this shit's witchcraft. Right. And not only is this not a secret, it's like, has it's been done for, for the idea of manifestation is a concept that, that predates, you know, civilization in a sense, we manifest what it is that we want. So I think for me, the book is really trying to say that manifestation is not some Eastern spiritual guru place that you have to ascend to, that it's very much in the palm of your hands. Um, and I think a lot of witches think that manifestation is something different. And to me, it's the same as spell work. So really that's kind of how I come across it. it it's looking at a goal. The book talks about um, what manifestation is, what manifestation isn't, mm. uh, the do's and don'ts of the practices of witchcraft, uh, and how to kind of like utilize the two and embrace that. Incredible. Did, I mean, because yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I I love all that, and and you know, I think people are more interested in witchcraft now than than I've ever seen visiting my favorite bookstores and all that stuff. So it it is it is way on the rise, and. Uh, I love that, man. I think people are, you know, you and Adela always had a, a, a real feeling of authenticity with what you guys were speaking about and putting out there. So we feel we feel so uh, blessed and grateful and uh, to have you know been able to speak with you guys for so long about all these incredible things. But um, I love that idea of manifestation. My wife is really getting into that right now, too. It's funny to watch her go from uh, not having anything to want to do with any of this stuff to like, you know, she got a tarot reading uh, from the lady we had on. And now she's interested in in, in your book, Dylan, and manifestation. So and yeah, that's right. That's right. And so she's she's really starting to 
she's opening the door and walking through and it's been fun to watch that journey you know oh are you like baby baby uh i sent out some crystals by the bed tonight yeah no oh my god oh and charlie charlie is like way into like crystals she was charging our crystals in like the moon the other night it was yeah so it's like i'm I'm secretly getting this whole family on board with you're gonna have like a mini family coven yeah (laughs) it's exactly exactly but you know it's like I, especially like if your wife's into manifestation stuff, you know, one of the things that I talk about in the book is like when you do vision boards or when you kind of write your intention or something that, I mean, all that coincides with spell work. And I think so many people try to um, separate the two. Uh, And really what this book kind of shows is that like, you know, witchcraft isn't all about going in the woods, dropping her clothes and like calling in some horned God, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just the weekends. A little bit. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we want that's some cool, of that. Man. Like some, a little bit. I'm yeah, just... we, def- we definitely need our pan gods in there too. So. Of course. <laughs> Dylan, do you get into, because I feel like when I read The Secret, other than like some questionable stuff about impoverished people just need to wish a little bit more. Um, wish a little <laughs> harder. Uh, but uh, I remember, I, I remember that was around the time I came up, kind of through that book, maybe or something else, reading about the Hermetic Law of Attraction. Mm-hmm. Is that something you're familiar with, and does that play into witchcraft directly? Yes, and Could you and- explain it to us for us a little bit, maybe. Well, I always I- heard, I've always heard the Hermetic Law of Attraction was like there's a sliding scale theoretically of like you know whatever you put out if you're putting out negative energy or negative thoughts you're you're gonna gonna get get that that bounced back to you so it's sort of like setting your tuner for good for for better things and obviously chaos happens but in general yes i mean it's it's sad because well not sad i'm not the person to ask about that because i believe that the concept of good and evil is relative Mm. okay great Um, so I, like the hermetic law of attraction is very similar with the Wiccan law of threefold, whatever you do comes back to you three times. Oh yeah. Um, and while I do believe in, I definitely believe in some aspect of Dharma or karma. Um, I really think it's just the laws of nature and how much you can manipulate it and to what extent. So I think of it less as, um, a a i i see it less of of uh, attraction or getting something back or reciprocity and i think of it more as kind of like an elastic band so when you do magic and when you do witchcraft or when you do any form of manipulating in nature the way that i kind of see it is imagine that you have a rubber band or a piece of elastic and it's pretty much how far can you stretch it and if you stretch it too far it's either going to break or slap back and hit you in the face. So that's kind of how I kind of see things like that. Um, And I always go back to that Jurassic Park quote where it's like nature finds a way. (laughs) So I think there's only so much people can manipulate or people can do things. So going to like the impoverished, like I don't think you can just sit there and wish and be like, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. I think there has to be mundane work involved behind it. Um, but at and the same time, systematic change <laughs> precisely, but at the same time too, um, I can't tell you, at least from a personal experience and like helping clients and doing spell work for people, um, when you have a, a physical item or mindset, or you put, you focus on something, you and the universe just kind of go hand in hand and it will happen, you mm. know, I'm because essentially subconsciously one, I think you're fighting for it. Um, and I think too, if you believe that you can manipulate manipulate nature or the laws of nature to some extent, you you are going to push those boundaries or or barriers, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I guess collectively too, if you're looking for systemic change, that also works as well. Or just mm-hmm. bending smaller things to your will that I think are in your personal orbit. You know, I think of the, I think the challenge that a lot of people have with this is that there's such a thing of fully commanding everything so if anything bad happens to you it was your fault or anything good happens to you it's, yes because i don't believe you know that there's still you know 
the fates still deal, you know, blows to people oh, and they're not absolutely. in control of it. And I think that there are things you cannot manipulate. And I'll go into that with like, I speak specifically about people, you know? I mean, I could sit here every day for the rest of my life and light a million candles and be like, okay, Hugh Jackman, you are the one, you're my <laughs> boo. Come to daddy, <laughs> yeah. There we go. But if Hugh Jackman doesn't know that I exist, and I also tell people, you know, I bet you there are hundreds of other people doing spell work for Hugh Jackman, you know? Um, Hugh Jackman, the witch's number one choice. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> then it's 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 not going to happen because it, it's there are so many limitations that stand in the way of that. Um, but I one of the stories that I was talking about manipulating, and I tried to put this in my book, and I didn't have time, so it'll be in my next one. But I think magic goes hand in hand. Like Marie Laveau was a very famous 18th century voodoo queen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, where I'm going with this is that in when she died, the New York Times printed her obituary and they said she was able to walk on water and and she died at a hundred and she did all these crazy, you know, very Jesus-like um, things. But at the end of the day, I think it's because one, she was, she was a hairdresser. She was a free woman of color. She was able to manipulate the system around her. And she had high profiled clients that kind of assisted her to getting where she was able to go. So I do think with magic or, or using any time of sorcery, I think it's that, but I also think it has to do with what you know and how you utilize things on a mundane level. Mm. I can at least relate to the fact that when I've set very specific goals, those tend to be the ones that really pay off. When I am languishing in a, I want, uh, well, I want this kind of thing to happen. You know what I mean? And oftentimes these are career based, but I think they can apply across the board in personal relationships and everything else. Like I, it is, in, it is fascinating that I do think the more, you know, exactly what you want, the 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 better chance you have of making that a reality if you put your will into action as opposed to going well i just like something nice to happen for once you know what i mean right, like, yeah you have a better chance of hitting a bullseye if you're aiming your bow and arrow at it you know what i mean instead of just absolutely. blindfolding yourself and you know shooting anywhere or you're yeah. your and you have to be very oh, specific gun, yeah. <clears throat> like, you have to be very specific and i think people are afraid here's what i've noticed um I've noticed that people are afraid to be selfish and people are afraid to ask for that specific because they feel that they do not deserve that specific. And I actually had a client who, you know, recently they were going through a career thing and they wanted this new career opportunity. And I was like, this is what you have to do. You have to write it down. You have to put envision it. You have to like, I even told him to go to the extent of like printing out the logo of the company and folding it and things like that. Um, and they got a job with that company, but it wasn't what they wanted. And then at the end of the day, they realized that they weren't specific because they were self-conscious about asking for that position. Mm -hmm. You know, they were so in, they were so committed to getting their foot in the door that they didn't do that. And while I still think they can put in the work to get that position, it's like you really, I always tell people, don't be afraid to aim for the tallest uh, from the highest apple on the tree. I think somewhere too, people subconsciously sometimes people don't even really know what they want you know mm -hmm. and and deeply embedded within their subconscious knows what they need and what they want and then that's usually what people get is is really what they need you know not so much what they think they want um you know and a lot of times people say they want something but i i think that's only surface level stuff when when if they did a little bit more digging, they might find that they probably don't want what they want. <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. And I think a lot of people make sacrifices to for stability. And, yeah. and when they find that stability, they kind of cling to it. And one of the reasons I kind of stepped away from doing readings uh, during the pandemic, because I found that my cards and my readings, a lot of them were very repetitive. It was mm. a lot of people wanting kind of the same thing or stuck in the same kind of um um 
low vibrational plane, so to speak. Um, and when you would tell someone you have this opportunity to reach out, they found it so otherworldly or impossible that I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm here to tell you what you can do and I can be your cheerleader, but you have to eventually believe that you can get to that too. What do you say to people who don't know what they want? I feel like that, oh God, every time I ask a question like that, I really hear George Norrie creeping in. What do you say to people who don't know what they want, Mystic Dylan? Well, one, um, one thing that, that, that I do for myself is I write a list. Uh, when people don't know what they want, I tell them to write about what they love, you know? And then once you go through what you love, then think about, okay, if X, Y, and Z were taken away from you, how would that make you feel? Mm. And then I kind of go from there. Um, a lot of people get like, they'll have families and they'll be content, but they don't know the next step. And usually 80% of the time, the next step has to do with something that they either put on the back burner or it's something that they've always wanted to do and they've been afraid to take that leap of faith um, mm. or they want to try something new. So I, I try to tell people to kind of go from there. Uh, and also I think it's, it's the, um, the fear of, of being selfish. A lot of people who have big families or like I had this for a hard time. My parents, I love them to death. They are complete narcissists. Mm. Like, like, so I think for a long time, I was very shy and very in the background. And I was a huge introvert because I felt if I ever brought attention to myself, I was having that like inflated ego where I was walking in the path of them and I didn't want, want that. So usually I just tell people, pretend that no one else is around. Pretend that every door is open to you. Um, what do you want? It doesn't matter if it's fantasy, it doesn't matter what it is and then start going from there. Um, I did this exercise with a client and she wanted to be, her goal was to be a singer. Um, she's not a singer now, but she's a very high profile uh, music producer, you know? And it started with that idea of what she wanted. She wanted to do music. She wanted to be in that realm. And then she slowly worked her way there. And maybe that yeah, feeds back into what, yeah, what Bryce is saying, like maybe what you think you want isn't always what you need. It's maybe true. it's being in music is the thing, you know. Yep. Um, and, and now her paycheck is tithed to me, so I get a little cut. And that's what Mystic Dylan wants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mystic Dylan wants to be the Oprah of witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're well on your way, my yeah. friend. Yeah, you're Thank making you. your own book club. Where can people find uh, The Witch's Guide to Manifestation? Uh, you can pre order it on Amazon. Um, that's probably the best way to get it because it really helps with uh, my little author profile numbers that I never check. Uh, though I recently looked and Candle Magic for Beginners is like number six in uh, Ooh, Magic and Studies. Congratulations. Wow. So yeah, so I can, uh, it's it's best selling. So that's I was cool. delighted when Candle that's Magic great. popped up on my Target app. There we go. I've seen it at Target. I'm in Walmart. <laughs> I'm Dude, in all huge. those places. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, incredible. It's really, really cool. Um, so that was cool. Um, and then like, <laughs> I don't know. It's cool to see your book in like weird places. Target I'm... was pretty shocking though. Cause I was like, witchcraft has become that mainstream. Yes. Like That's I don't think awesome. really I've ever seen a witchcraft book in Target aside from like mine. <laughs> yeah. Which is good. That's when like little a... girls and little boys can like sneak it in their mom's cart as they're shopping for bath towels, you know. That's I guess right. I'm getting this. All right, fine, fine. Just put it in the on the counter. Oh, making yeah. candles. It's about craft work. Fun. Yeah. That's All right, right. fine, Candle Debbie, magic. fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though I've never made a candle in my life. I mean, I craft them, but I've never <laughs> I don't do with heat and melted wax and all that stuff. I can't. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations. Everybody should go uh, check that out and go find those books. Um, all right. Well, we brought you here to listen to some listener stories, read some listener stories. We're going to sort of kick things off with a uh, Riley Get Ready. Ooh. All right. I I'm ready. <laughs> Are you going to count us in? Oh, 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 okay. Oh, gonna... that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... Me! 
CC News. All right, this came actually from a listener, so I lopped it in with the elf files. Uh, this listener, uh, his name is Gr- uh, is Rick, and uh, Rick said, great work. Hey, hey, boys, great work on the Travis episodes. Mm-hmm. Travis Walton, I assume. Really enjoyable and good research. I thought I'd read it all. I thought I'd read it all, but you'd uncovered stuff I'd never heard about. Here is the latest news from here at Loch Ness. Oh, there you go. We got oh, a wow. listener. Got some Nessie news from uh, Scotland. This is awesome. One cryptid and one, well, best read it to see. So we got two little news items here. So I'm going to read you guys the first one. Uh, this comes from Edinburgh, uh, edinburghlive.co.uk. Loch Ness monster spotted for the second time in 11 days as. 12 foot quote unquote creature sighted the prehistoric Ooh. beast allegedly rose two feet out of the lock before diving down into the murky waters in the second recent sighting recorded by experts at Loch Ness. So the Loch Ness monster reportedly made a second appearance in the space of 11 days after being spotted surfacing from her mythological home. Yes, that's right. They and we say she. Uh, A tourist from the northwest of England reported seeing the prehistoric beast rise two feet from the murky highland waters before descending back into the PT depths while on holiday last month. The spotter, identified only as Mr. Vicock, sketched a diagram of the shape he saw through a pair of binoculars two-thirds of the way across the lock, claiming it could be up to 12 feet in length. The sighting has become the ninth added to the official register which catalogs all rec- recorded encounters within the locks most of uh, the locks most famous resident it comes less than a fortnight after a father and daughter claimed to have seen nessie moving through the water while hiking nearby did the According sketch to look the... like this <laughs> look Un- <laughs> pretty close um According to the latest entry, dated July 30th, Mr. Vcock, visiting from the northwest of England, was parked up in the last lay by north of the castle, scanning the lock with his binoculars when he noticed something two-thirds across the lock away. He originally thought it was a foot high and some five foot long, but later was able to compare it with the Jacobite warrior as it passed by the area. As such, he stated that what he observed was easily the length of of the handrail at the rear of that boat, which led him to reassess what he saw as nearly two feet high and 10 to 12 feet long. Oh, is that what a Jacobite warrior is? It's a boat? It's a boat. He said the same was was witnessed by two other families in the lay-by. The register, maintained by a team of volunteers, categorizes sightings of the plesiosaurus back to the earliest description in the 6th century when it was reportedly halted in its tracks by St. Columba. So there you go. Even though, you know, eDNA begs to differ, people still see in Nessie, which I think is really um, charming and sort of uh, reassuring to be, yeah. you know, honestly, like, you know, even if that's it is why she's top deal. five, Michael, she's not, you know, she's trying to stay in those in those high numbers. I mean, people love her. I'm Absolutely. here for it. I yeah. believe. I do, do. Are you a believer? In, that, in I yeah, remember where you were on the bullshit or believe it with that one. No, I I definitely believe in 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 that because I think there are so many creatures and animals that have yet to be discovered. Um, that I now, totally totally believe it. Let me dig in a little further. Are you more of a supernatural Nessie or or sort of a uh, you know flesh and blood uh, Pleistocene dinosaur relic uh, still oh. alive today? <clears throat> so I real can, real dinosaur or supernatural creature okay i think that there definitely could be a creature that has not been discovered mm. officially yet that yeah. could be nessie so i do see a flesh and blood nessie however given where she's from i also totally 100 percent believe that there is some ancient primordial water spirit nessie Oh no, yeah. I'm there for I'm there for both, both, especially if you look at like Celtic and Irish and, and Pictish folklore, 
there are so many of these sea creatures and seahorses and sea monsters and and lake dwellers that yeah. I I you know you can't I think a lot of people when it comes to cryptids we count a lot of the modern and we kind yeah. of discredit like the ancient mythos and if you look if you combine the two it's like there's consistency yeah. I want to see emerge supernatural Nessie, flesh and blood dinosaurs. <laughs> Together we are one, Nessie. You can know you what please I mean? make that music video? Yeah, that's happening. And then can it be you on a jet ski? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being well, pulled you know by Nessie. That's a Club I... Bryce loop that we will play <laughs> into a new track as part of the jet ski I'm, special. I'm kind. You know Wait, what? what about Bryce riding a Nessie? Yes, guys. We if will... we get. If we get 5,000 yes. patrons, <laughs> we will have Bryce will ride, ride Nessie naked. A relic dinosaur. He will fuck um, a Nessie in, in shape. I will Road. fuck a Nessie for 5,000 patrons. You know, I think, you know, <laughs> what you were saying is like aliens to me fall in this category and, and so does Bigfoot as well. Like, like I'm there for supernatural Bigfoot and orbs and, and portal crossing, but I'm also very much there for flesh and blood bigfoot uh and the same goes with aliens right i'm there Absolutely. for like i don't know light vehicles uh from who knows where and then i'm also there for tin cans from zeta reticuli so it's like that's what i love about all this stuff is is it seems to support a little bit of everything which is very confounding and confusing to um guys like us but you know hey yes. makes it fun i mean i did have a revelation like like a while ago i was thinking because i was everyone like cryptids are like a new well they're not a new thing but like people come to the shop as have a cryptid section um yes. <laughs> i know um so um but i think in my mind i was like if we look at animals like animals have these spiritual and magical associations yeah and and then i was like well what if what if there were creatures that kind of like aligned with the spiritual and supernatural and they were kind of walking both sides. Yeah, you know? I think not? Bigfoot might be one of those, Bryce. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. Bigfoot is some like, I don't know, shaman. <laughs> yeah. Or like worshiped as a deity and really was just Bigfoot. Totally, look, if we've, if we've found access to these other dimensions, whether it be through psychedelics, chanting, drumming, if there's other ways to achieve these sort of altered states of consciousness, who's to say that the plant animal world doesn't do the same thing? I mean, we know Absolutely. there's certain insects and, and, and mammals that will chew on uh, toxic plants and leaves to get a high from them. And so who knows what type of altered states of consciousness these uh, these animals are are getting into and 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 what type of energy they're able to create with that you know who who knows man yeah they're all right well we got anything. another quick one from yeah. rick in scotland i think you guys will enjoy this one uh this is from the 9th of august uh, i'm reading this from the national the newspaper that supports an independent scotland okay. no idea if this is credible or not but uh loch ness google maps photo glitch brings up not safe for work image people oh. looking up Loch Ness on Google Maps got more than they were searching for in recent days thanks to a street view glitch an unexpected photograph in the place of the iconic beauty spot went viral when social media users sharing the bizarre find uh, went with social media users sharing the bizarre find with one another instead of a picture of the stunning 23 mile long lock or of anything in the water Google Maps showed searchers a selfie of a naked man standing on a terrace outside of an apartment. Oh, um, I did these. This guy is a uh, buff. <laughs> it's digitized, so you can't see his Wrong. face or his junk, but he's he's got a nice upper upper torso with a backwards baseball cap and some glaring uh, patio furniture behind him. Uh, Google that. Maps has since removed the image, which the National has pixelated above uh, by restricting the street <laughs> option for the area. Just when just seen why Loch Ness is trending, one person joked after the incident. <laughs> That's not the sort of monster I was looking for. I got I your Nessie Ness right here. <laughs> I thought Loch Ness was uh, was trending because of country <laughs> file. How wrong I was, added another. 
Uh, so anyway, just a little uh, funny, unexpected, and a uh, reminder to be careful when going out there searching <laughs> for cryptids. Um, right. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to dig into this bag of elf files with Mystic Dylan. Let's do it. All right, right, if you're watching this on the Patreon, this is just for you. A little break that really isn't a break between the episode, uh, between the episode segments. But hi, thank you. Thank you for subscribing. We love you. Kisses. Also, ah. guys, we have to do some Patreon shout outs. Should we do that at the very end of this episode after we say goodbye to Dylan? I forgot to say that uh, up top of the show. Yeah, I'm sure. All right, good. So if you're listening and you haven't heard your name yet, stick around. We're going to get to you. All right, Riley, bring us back in for part two. And we're back in three. Okay, it's Wet Hot Alien Summer 2 Summer Abduction with Mystic Dylan. And boy, oh boy, you guys sent in some UFO L files for us. I'm so excited. Um, now, I have a question for Bryce that um, this came from, you know what? I apologize to the previous writer. His name was Graham. And the way I copy and pasted this, I called him Rick. This is actually from Rick. Scottish Graham, I'm sorry. Uh, Rick, who has this question, uh, we're about to get it answered for you, okay? Uh, my apologies. <clears throat> Listen, symporium, emporium, symposium, systemic, systematic. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, we're going to kick it off with a question for Bryce, which, okay. which unites two of our favorite topics, orbs and Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bryce, I have a question for you. I'm not sure if you've covered this one on the podcast. In seasons one and two of Expedition Bigfoot, there were orbs that the team saw and filmed. Did anyone uh, on the team investigate this? Any comments? Love your podcast. Love Expedition Bigfoot show. And I'm looking forward to season three. Thank you for reading this, Rick. Yeah, well, it's a great question, Rick. I mean, you know, we tried to investigate them as much as possible. And that really just means, first of all, we recorded them uh, for not only our naked eyes to see, but for the viewers to see as well. And when it comes to investigating the orbs, all you can really do is sort of eliminate what they aren't, you know? They're not somebody with a flashlight. They're not a car. They're, they're not, not ice shine. Uh, they're not. I, yeah, they're they're not ice. They're not some plane. And when you when you're able to eliminate all those things, and you're left with sort of these these lazy lights that you know, it, we investigate them as much as possible. And I know we try and go towards them, but for I think I think for us in the field, it really became a matter of eliminating what they weren't, and and we we could not figure out what in the hell they were. Um, because we were in the middle of nowhere and you'd see these strange just lights. And God, if if I wasn't so familiar with the literature of people having encounters with 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 Bigfoot like hairy hominid creatures and orbs of light, um, you know, I would have been a little bit more confused. But but man, they just there's a lot of accounts where they just go synonymous with Bigfoot sightings. And so um especially for Ronnie LeBlanc, he wrote a, he wrote a whole book on the subject. Um, and so for him, he knew exactly what they were. I mean, he knew that they were orbs. We don't know what the orbs are. Are they astral projecting Bigfoots? Are they, are yes. they some sort of, you know, spirit tulpa of, of a giant hominid? We're not sure. Nobody are they knows. The spirits of the dead following Bigfoot around the woods. That's what I was yeah. going to say his victims. Yes. Oh, oh my God. That's oh, that's good. That's a first. I've never heard that. Uh, when it comes to, I thought of. Yeah, no, I love it. You know, when it comes to trying to figure out what they are, your guess is as good as mine. Thanks for that question, though, Rick. I love that. I love it, too. Um, also, Rick, check out Ronnie's work. He, he gets in all this stuff and also check out um, Where the Footprints End, Volumes 1 and 2 by uh, Joshua Cushion and Timothy Renner. We reviewed volume one over on the patreon and if you're interested in this topic you should yeah. definitely definitely check those books out great book here's bigfoot um, oh look there's volume right two there. right there look bigfoot's bigfoot holding an orb orb Aww. Yeah. So. check those books out dude you will you will dig them okay bryce why don't you kick it off with an l file okay let's do it i'm gonna read from my phone so that i can keep you guys all on my screen here we go um here we go 
Hi, Michael Bryce, Riley, and distinguished guest. That would be you, Mr. Dillon. Indeed. Look at that in, outfit very and indeed. look at that chair. <laughs> and the I've background. A, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been a fan since the beginning and have been meaning to send in a story for years. This is not one I ever planned on sending, but the memory popped into my head when you said you needed stories for Wet Hot Alien Summer 2. It's short, sweet, and underwhelming. <laughs> well, we'll be the, we'll be the judge of that. <clears throat> Way to sell your story. <laughs> yeah, we'll be the judge of that. Here we go. When I was a little kid, we had an Atari Twenty Six Hundred. We kept the cartridges in one of those cases where they each had their own slot with the label yep. facing out that sat on top of the TV. Oh yeah, I know it well. One day, my older sister and I were sitting on the couch watching a show when one of the games shot out of its slot and landed on the orange shag carpet about five or six feet in front of the TV. None of the other games had budged. What was the game? Any Space guesses? Space Invaders. Space Invaders. That's exactly right, Riley. That's it. That's the closest I get to a cool alien story. But I'm going to keep watching the skies. Thank you for the show. It brightens my day. Wow, that's a trip. Yeah, that's awesome. That's like straight out of Stranger Things or something. That, that's Yeah, dude, that's metal. I love that. Uh, <laughs> we want you to play our game. Try us, bitch. Try us. <laughs> dude, I remember. So I, for you youngins and you kitties out there, I used to wake up summer mornings. You and, puppies and, and kittens. You little here, puppies man. and kitty cats. Uh, but I'd play ceiling. Atari at my dad's house and we'd wake up. And we'd go to the old yellow tablet, which had like the latest high score usually crossed out. And when you got a new high score, because that's what you aimed for, I'm like Centipede or 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 Dugout or all those classics, you know. Dig you, Dug. Dig Dug, yes, thank you. My dad's favorite. You would just cross out that old high score and and put it up. And and that's getting old with Bryce. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what was your what was your high score? Do you remember what game you were like? Did you win? Did you, I, I don't remember the the high scores, but I know I I rocked pretty good at, at Centipede and, and Pac Man and I I and... was good at Asteroids. Uh, uh, weirdly, my very first mm. game I played as a kid I think was Asteroids, and I was like pretty good at it for a yeah. kid. You know, I I don't know if Atari had this game, but Moon Patrol was always a favorite of mine. You were in that, that little buggy, cool. yep. and you'd have to bounce over the craters and shoot the UFOs and and shoot the things going forward, but. Anyway, Mr. that was a great Dylan, letter. Thank you. Any <clears throat> poltergeist activity in your world? Have you ever witnessed anything fly across the room or uh, perhaps the aftermath? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, our shop, like, our shop is hella haunted. Yeah. Hella haunted. We've had lots of, of crazy things. Uh, we had, uh, the most recent was, when, well, or the oldest, when we first moved into the shop, uh, I guess the room, the room that I'm in, was rented out by the Catholic Church for like Sunday school. So they would do Sunday school <laughs> here. So when we got here, there were all these Bible verses on these whiteboards. Um, and we moved everything out. Nothing was in here. And I kid you not, like I like we had blue walls. We hadn't really done construction, but we had opened the shop as a pop-up and I was doing readings in here. So I had my table, I had my chair, I sat down. And all of a sudden, crayons, like, I can't even make this shit up. We had these slats in the wall, started like falling out of the slats. Oh my like, God. Crayons. <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. I was like, little ghost children. Um, <laughs> little stuff with poltergeist is, makes it so much scarier. Like I'm so much more afraid of crayons than like knives. No, know? absolutely. <laughs> so we definitely have kind of, we have that, uh, we have a glass on our display that broke for no reason. Um, we have statuary that gets knocked over. Um, so it's it's pretty crazy here at the Old World Emporium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Dillon, when you, saw, when you saw that that was like an old like Sunday school room where you're like, this will work perfect. <laughs> Paint it all black. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, I was like, can we keep the Corinthians quote? Right, right, yeah. You and actually one want. of the quotes was like they had something about like not doing divination or practicing fortune telling and i was like and we're gonna do exactly that. oh that's great that's amazing 
upset, yeah. upset those ghost nuns. Yeah, now yeah. we know why those crowns were the nuns were like, <laughs> me. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Uh, Riley, what do you got for us? All right. Hi, boys. Love the podcast, and I can't wait for Expedition Bigfoot Season 3. Ooh, a lot of EB3 love tonight. That makes all of us. Uh, I've had a few sightings. One was in Virginia in 2010. I was driving down a dark country road on my way to a football party. A football party? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not even going to. Okay. <laughs> Out of nowhere, a bright <laughs> light streaked past me in the sky. Now, I've seen plenty of meteors and shooting stars, and this was just way too low to be one of those and was going way too fast. I didn't tell anyone about it that night. The other sightings happen happened closer to, I don't know, the other sightings happened closer together, and this year, 2021. One weekend, my stepdaughter was playing softball in the same town that my cousin-in-law lives. She invited us to stay with her and her family that weekend so that we didn't have to stay in a hotel. That Saturday night, after the softball game, we were all on the back porch chatting. Nobody was drinking. It was dark, and they live in a very rural area. I was looking out at the night sky to see if I could spot any lightning from the thunderstorms that had passed through, because in Texas, you can see them from miles away. As I'm looking up, I noticed that all the clouds had moved out of the area, and so I was looking at the stars. I thought, I thought. One of the stars quickly moved left, right, left, and then up slightly, and then it just faded out. I was so freaked out by what I just saw that I didn't say anything to anyone. The next time I saw this was three weeks later at the beach. My husband and I facilitated a week-long beach getaway for my stepdaughter, her boyfriend, and eight of their friends before they all went off to college. It was basically American Pie 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but with aliens. <laughs> and gross. They... <laughs> He says gross, uh, not, uh, judging their teen romp. Uh, one night after dinner, I was standing on the front porch looking out at the stars. I just poured myself a drink and was enjoying the nice mild evening. The area that we were staying in was not well lit, so there was not a lot of light pollution. As I'm looking at the stars, I see one move left and right and fade out again. I didn't know conclusively that I have seen any UFOs per se, but based on my experience in looking at stars and seeing satellites and planes in the sky at night, I can say without a doubt that this was not a star. It was not a plane. It was not a helicopter. Thanks for reading my freaky story of possible UFO sightings during this wet, hot alien summer. Daniel. Hell yeah. Nice. Thank you, Danielle. Look, I've seen that too. I saw that in Sedona, Arizona. I get it. And I grew up in Kansas like you. Big sky country right next to a small airport. So we saw helicopters and planes all the time growing up. So when you see something in the sky that you know is not a plane and behaves that way, you know, yeah. satellites are, go fast, but they just kind of shoot in one direction. This is something else entirely different. So I'm with you, Danielle. Yeah, multi-directional, no blinking lights, no noise. Those are the telltale signs of something I unidentified. Yeah, uh, you know, it's crazy. And, you know, let's just do the math real quick. There's approximately a thousand reported UFO sightings a year. And only 10% of people who witness anomalous phenomena like UFOs report it. So that's, you do the math, that's about 10,000 uh, sightings in just America alone. Um, so the numbers are staggering of how much shit is actually up there. So just take the time to take a look. And the red light streaking past the car was kind of cool too. I haven't heard of anything like that. I wonder. Yeah, man. Strange. You know what? It, it, it kind of goes in waves like that. I remember when I was seeing a lot of those strange, there look like white pin dots in the sky and you get the feeling that they're like, they're like following you. And when you, and then like a day or two later, you'll see the same thing again. So it kind of comes in like waves or streaks, almost like it's very personal for you. It's a very strange phenomena. Strange indeed. All right, boys, uh, I sent you an email with some photos, a series of yeah. photos that goes with this story. Uh, I believe this is this one. It yes. wasn't a text. Yes. It was an email. This one's an email. Guys, okay. if you're listening at home, uh, I will put these uh, up on the old Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club on Instagram. Okay, so this reads, Hi, Michael, Bryce, Riley, and Mystic Dylan. Oh, yeah. You can use my name. It is Brendan. 
I love Bigfoot Collectors Club. I always look forward to each week's episode. Well, guess what, Brendan? You're on this week's episode. Uh, I have been meaning to send this to you. This happened on May 2nd, 2020 during quarantine. I wrote this so I could have written an, uh, I could have a written account of what I had witnessed. This was originally written moments after seeing this. Here's what he wrote. Quote, I just saw a strange light in the night sky. It is currently 1030 PM. This happened about 15 minutes ago. I live in Eastern Rhode Island. I will preface this is during the pandemic, so there has been a little air there has been little airplane activity. I saw a red light in the southern sky moving from southwest to northeast at a fairly quick pace. A solid red light with no flashing lights and zero sound. After seeing the object moving through the sky, it just kind of phased away out of sight. I have seen a fair share of satellites in the past, and they are generally white dim lights this was a bright red light i thought it might have been a drone but they normally flash and you can generally hear the engine and rotor uh, mechanism Mm -hmm. as the light moved northeast it dimmed and vanished i am not really sure what i just saw all right so he goes on to write in his letter during this experience i did not lose time and nothing happened since i found out a couple of days later that this happened to my family on long island new york and they all saw something that night. My what? father, mother, brother, and my cousin's boyfriend all saw what looked to them to be white lit satellites high above their respective homes. And that my sister also in a different town on Long Island saw a red lit object flying in the sky. I don't know what the heck we might have seen that night. I was able to take photographs from my phone, which are included in this email. I have a They're few incredible. weird experiences with that, with what I believe to be ghosts in the past, which I will send in the future. I would love to hear what you think uh, this might have been. I mean, look, Danielle said it, said, saw the same shit you did. Um, Brendan, um, yeah, what do you think, Mystic Dylan? What, what is this? I Because I'm looking at the picture, I'm like, it's, 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 I mean, it almost looks like a, a planet, like, like, whether it be Venus or Jupiter, but like, I don't know, it's, it's definitely a red thing in the sky. And it's moving, so it's not a stationary object. And no, it but the date that he mentioned is interesting because, so like Beltane or like that that solstice, you have that solstice time that's there. So I I, I would definitely take note of that uh, to time see for if magical happenings. What you're saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, maybe that veil gets because, like, when we yeah. talk about the veil, it's it's the energy, the the plane within this realm and the next. It gets thinnest during Sao in October, but then also uh, in May. Um, so maybe it was just kind of like that cl- sheet being ripped open and and them being able to see something. Which is in Long Island. Right. What do That's you think, wild. Riley? You're looking at it. Looking at the photos. Yeah, they're really cool. Um, they are. I love the one where it's you see the full context of the house and the tree there. It, you, that light is so bright. It's also very, very spooky photo. It really is. Because you see it uh, in between the tree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. And it's red. Yeah. But it's very, it's very ominous. And the fact that like ev- all the people in his family also had the same experience that night is like super trippy and weird. And everyone's seeing these lights. And I mean. It's not a it's not a commercial drone because, like you said, you you can hear those and they're very recognizable and they they do all have blinking lights and they just move differently and I don't I don't know I mean saw something I don't know what it is Brandon it's you got yourself yeah. a UFO buddy yeah I went ahead and drew what I think you might have seen <laughs> that's it. a classic yeah. saucer what you saw Brandon was a classic CS that stands for classic saucer son and uh, you done saw that. Amazing. Now Thanks he probably for... didn't report it, right? Only only to us. I would imagine yeah. he didn't contact MUFON or or any of the other organizations. Nope. <clears throat> I guess we better start keeping a log. Okay, yeah. Mystic Dylan, what do you have in the old L file bag for our Let's listeners? See. Of course, I... it's time of the night. It's the time Here's of the night where Violet story. needs to chime in. Here's my story. Hi, Violet. Hey, BBBs. Beautiful Bigfoot boys. I'm calling us that. I'm calling you that from now on. You can hear you're part of it too. 
Well, there we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself a shirt. Oh, I'm so sad. Yesterday I was wearing my alien summer shirt because my brain is messed up and I thought yesterday was Wednesday. Oh, there we go. A classic. Wear it in honor. Um, so my Uncle Bob, everyone has an Uncle Bob, but mine is especially great has always had an interest in UFOs. I never really knew why, as he's otherwise not into any kind of supernatural hullabaloo, religion, philosophy, etc. He's a goofy, down-to-earth engineer who makes advanced math problems solving videos on YouTube for fun. I was recently visiting home, and we started talking about disclosure since it had been in the news. He told me how he became interested in UFOs. I asked him in e to email me the story so I could send it to you guys. This is the email. It was a dark and stormy night. No, wait, that's another story. He's funny. <laughs> in the mid 70s- Getting cute on us. <laughs> in the mid 70s, the entire family was gathering at my parents' home in Denver. My mom and sister were coming back after visiting a friend south of Denver. That was all country had back then. As they were driving home at night on Parker Road, they stopped because a car had halfway pulled off the road in front of them. They pulled in behind that car and noticed them staring up into the sky. My mom and sister got out too and looked up. They described three glowing orange discs directly above them. This lasted about a minute with no noise, at which point they shot up very fast and disappeared. They were sure they were not helicopters or balloons or such, but had no explanation. My mom and sister were not creative nor prone to making up stories. At that point, I knew there was something to the UFO stories over the years. Doobie. Wow. And there's That's a crazy. PS there too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, yes. I was like, scroll up. Okay, short and sweet. He also volunteers for MUFON. MUFON. There we mm. go. And had an email chain uh, with Stanton Friedman going back in the day about the 2013 uh, Puerto Rico video, which he debunked. He's never found a video that he wasn't able to be debunked with math, but he's still a believer. That's interesting. This is the Aguadilla Puerto Rico video, Puerto Rico uh, video, which I think came out in the slew of like Pentagon videos. This was like a video that Homeland Security took. So I'll put a link if you're interested in reading that at home. We won't get into it here, but uh, that's cool. That's way cool, it's yeah. 70s yeah. UFO sighting, you gotta love that. But there's a, seems to be a consistency in like color. I feel like so far there's like a red dot, an orange dot, that red orange. So I wonder if there's any significance there. Yeah, Very I don't know. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah, I noticed that too. You're right. Uh, you know, I used to live in Denver, uh, right in Parker. I used to live in Parker amongst other cities, but uh, that's strange. Yeah, when they shoot off in the air like that, I mean, that's that's pretty. I mean, God, you 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 hear about that in like movies and stuff, but to see it, that's that's pretty insane. That's cool. That was from listener and Patreon lyric. Thank you, lyric. Thank you, um, lyric. Riley. Why don't we circle back around to you Ooh. and see what we got? What do you got in the bag there, Riley? Let's take a look. Not bad. Hi, Bryce, Michael, Riley, and guest Mystic Dylan. My name. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. My name is Becca, and I live in New Hampshire. First things first, I want to say how much I love your podcast. Thank you, Becca. You, you guys really make me think about the paranormal in a whole new thought-provoking way with every episode. The humor you sprinkle in and each of your personalities mesh really well with each other and with the material you put out, which as a listener is hard to find with other podcasts. Your podcast helped me get through a rough time I was having last fall, and I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, well, Becca, we those are my favorite. Thank, yeah, we can't thank you enough for listening. So thank you. It was really nice to hear. Thank you. And hang in there. It goes a long way. We, we do appreciate it. Sometimes it feels like we're shouting into a void, and it's nice to uh, nice to hear back that we're connecting with people. Anyways, now on to my L file. It's not really a UFO story per se, more of a strange coincidence. Mm. I was listening to the Alien Grays episode you put out with John L. Tenney while getting ready for work. Nothing like some alien abduction stories at 6 a.m., am I right? <laughs> when you were hypothesizing what the Grays are after here on Earth. The, uh, what they're here after. 
I think. You're hypothesizing what the greys are after here on Earth. What, what is their intention? The power in my apartment flickered. In the whole two years I've lived in this apartment, I've never had something like this happen. I live in a city, so there are no trees or anything like that around that would fall on a power line and cause the flicker. It was a sunny day, too, so no wind or inclement weather would be the cause. Needless to say, the whole situation gave me goosebumps, and shortly after the occurrence, I went to work and carried about my day. I also want to mention that the governor of New Hampshire recently visited the landmark for Betty and Barney Hill and made a video about it. I thought mm. it I saw it because I've never heard that story until I listened to your podcast. Keep up the good work. I can't wait until your annual Halloween episodes come out. Those are my favorites every year. Becca. Oh, whoa. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's, Dylan that's cool. talking about interdimensional entities. I believe it. Them, per perhaps flickering the lights to say confirmation. Confirmation. They're like, yep, that's what's up. Yeah. That Becca. happened. Happen once. You got grays. <laughs> yeah, you got grays. I, I'm totally believe that. I think I think spirits, international, international, interdimensional yeah. beings, international <laughs> spirits. They're like they're really <laughs> debonair. <laughs> they're super sexy. You know, I they think... speak many different languages. <laughs> they like they like being talked about. You know, so I think I think by them listening and then and then. You know, knowing there's a story about them, they're going to give that confirmation. They're going to be like, yeah. what, what? Yeah, totally. If they, you know, we've posited a few wild ideas on this show, but one of the ones I always kind of liked was that all this stuff, all this phenomenon, everything is is somehow connected, somehow, some way connected to each other. And it's and it has sort of a, a trickster element to it. So when you're looking in, I always loved John Keel's sort of idea that when you look into the strange, the strange starts to look back at you. And so when you're paying attention to these weird subjects, especially at a strange time, like early in the morning about UFO abductions, that could be a way of the phenomenon saying, hey, you know, keep listening. You're on to it. You know, it's let's like, play. It's like that scene in Labyrinth when Jennifer Connelly evokes the goblins and the goblin king uh, when she's yeah. babysitting Toby and she starts to recite the poem. And then, you know, there's just a shot of all the goblins waking up, you know, yeah. on the other side. Say it, say it, say it. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. I agree. I oh, think when you step into that realm, you start, well, I, I think it's the same once it's like when people are like, Oh, I'm going to mess with a Ouija board. Now shit's happening. It's once you make that step, you are stepping into, you're inviting that energy. Mm -hmm. So I think by them listening to that and then getting that flickering of the light, not only is it a confirmation, but I think to me, it's, it's this like, a, it's that, oh, they're talking about me. We're yeah. here. You know, and going back to what you, we were talking about at the beginning of the show, manifestation, you know, I think a huge part of, of manifesting stuff is emotional height. And, and, and what I mean by that is, when you put like emotional fervor behind what you want to manifest, you know, it, ha I think it happens quicker and more profound. So, you know, when like to go off of what you were saying, Dylan, as an example, like when you're like getting ready to play with a Ouija board, you, you know, your emotions are kind of like they're tickled, they're heightened. And, and it's like, it's like these receptors shoot out of you and they're just picking up on all this energy and it's uh it happens faster and i think yeah that there's totally something to that and Bryce, i think you know when you're yes is this your way of saying that you're getting into sex magic yes that's what well, yes we i'm glad thought. to finally get it out on here but, here bryce uh, you can have you can have <laughs> <laughs> you can have my little crystal wand <laughs> okay i'll take it I'll we sell them at the shop. Um, but you know what I would say, Bryce, too, is like just going off of also congrats on season three of your show. Thank um, you. But I would say, I would say if you manifest, like if you are tapping into nature and mm. you have this passion, you're looking for something out of not just curiosity, but really wanting to explore. I have no doubt that if there is a Bigfoot, that receptive energy is going to be recognized by the Bigfoot and it will make itself known. Yeah. I think I, you are close. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I mean, yeah, there's something to that when, 
when you bring that that belief to it and that excitement and that fervor, that passion, it just it tingles the atmosphere around you and stuff starts to happen. Bryce, you got to start masturbating in the woods. And there we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even get me started. OK, <laughs> we well, we definitely don't want to. Um, yeah, no. Bryce, why don't you read the next letter okay. that we got? Thank okay. you, listener. Right. Uh, Becca, Great. sorry that devolved into yes. that. Yes, yes. Thank oh. you for your wonderful letter. Uh, okay, here we go. Do, 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 do. I, hey, fellas, I originally sent this to the godmother of the podcast, and she had Ooh. some fun with it on her podcast last year. Oh, talking about none other than Jen Kirkman. I thought I sent it over to you guys as well. I haven't experienced this, this letter's personally. made the podcast rounds. <laughs> it's making the rounds. I haven't experienced this personally, but it is a family story that we've all been fascinated by. My great grandmother on my mom's side lived a very fascinating life. She was a truck driver for the army, met fascinating old Hollywood people like Frank Sinatra and had a torrid love affair with a married country star named Ernest Tubb. Wow. Whoa. E even more fascinating was her brother who we all refer to as Uncle Larry. He lived most of his life in Southern California, served in the army, and was allegedly part of the team that invented the bazooka. He was also married to a lovely woman by the name of Mary Wells, who was a direct descendant from Mr. Wells of Wells Fargo. Right, so you wow. got to play this guy in a biography, like a yeah, biopic. I mean, there's enough here to do it, my God. Back in the early 70s, Uncle Larry, uh, Lawrence Foreman, uh, published a book called passport to eternity it details his encounter with aliens from outer space in the california desert wait what it is a tough read and no longer in print but interesting nonetheless uncle larry claims that he felt as though he was being watched one day it was a feeling he just couldn't shake so he decided to pack up and head out to one of his favorite camping spots in the desert while camping he encountered a man called Bill. They cooked out together, swapped stories, and formed an almost instantaneous friendship. Bill headed back to his own campsite after dinner, but promised Uncle Larry that he would encounter something fascinating the next morning. Uncle Larry woke up the next morning to very heavy footsteps outside his tent and was shocked to find Bill driving an enormous robot of some sort. Yo, this is amazing. I kept picturing that thing Sigourney Weaver fought the queen with in Aliens. Oh, yeah. The, That's the hydraulic a mech forklift. suit, not a robot. So yeah, maybe it was yeah. a mech suit. Yeah. Bill explained to him that he came from a different world. Man, this is so injured cold. Uncle Larry was intrigued and they made plans to meet again where Bill would show him even more fascinating things and information. No specific date was set. Only that Uncle Larry would feel that being watched feeling again. At their next camping encounter, Bill introduced Uncle Larry to his group of alien friends and was taken to their spaceship. According to Uncle Larry, it looked like a giant tent. I can't remember exactly how he described the exterior and interior, just that it was larger on the outside than how it appeared from the exterior. Larger oh. on the inside, I'm sorry, than yeah. how it appeared from the exterior. That's kind of like Sam the Sandown Clown's little hut. Yeah. Man, Uncle Larry would meet with Bill and his buddies numerous times on their tent-like spaceship where they explained where they came from and that the Earth is a prison planet. According to Bill, we humans are related to Bill's people, but we're born with some sort of veil over our brains to keep us from knowing what Bill's people know. Sounds a bit like what I've read about Scientology. He says later on he went to New Mexico and met even more of Bill's friends and saw their fleet of 21 spaceships. That's a good title, Fleet of 21 Spaceships. Uncle Larry went on to learn about how the universe works, according to Bill. He also le learned about cancer, plant-based meals, meats that taste like real thing, and cigarettes that don't cause cancer. I want some of those. The weed also burgers, basically? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Also, I love that the aliens are like, listen, we got to have meat and we got to smoke and we got to figure out a way to do both of those sustainably. 
That's amazing. These are like space cowboys in mech suits. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And his name is Bill. Yeah, dude, this is so amazing. Bill also gifted Uncle Larry with a cat that he named Susie. <laughs> My mom remembers the cat and how different she seemed to be from other cats. Not sure what she means by that. He had a painting. Well, of it Susie spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> he had a painting of that cat Susie commissioned, which we still have. I was always fascinated by his story and had the opportunity to ask him a few questions about it when he was alive. The question I remember asking the most was whether or not I would ever be able to meet Bill. Uncle Larry assured me that I would. I'm still waiting. I just hope he doesn't beam himself into my room while I'm sleeping and lurk over my bed like aliens do in abduction stories. Don't do that, Bill. It's an odd story that has always been an entertaining discussion topic in her family. Yeah, I'll bet. The book is no longer in print, but my mom inherited the original manuscript when Uncle Larry died in the late 1990s, and my great-grandmother passed away in the early 2000s. We thought about reworking it a bit and having it published again. You should, we'll discuss. Uh, but that project <laughs> remains on the back burner. I don't think I truly believe Uncle Larry met aliens from outer space. Could it have all been a series of very vivid dreams? It's fun to think about. Whatever it was, I like to believe it was true. But I've always been a bit of a skeptic. Loving the podcast and recently became a patron. Thanks for keeping me entertained josh josh thank you for your patronage thank you for that amazing amazing Thanks. fucking email and <laughs> yes you need to publish that original manuscript we'll help you uh <laughs> it sounds like you're uh, look you know there's people who oh, see you we well. can't even get our own shit published I, mean, gonna... you know, well, I know i know dylan <laughs> got any uh I'll, I'll shoot you my publisher's name yeah Look, there's people who see UFOs and there's people who experience strange stuff, but it sounds like your uncle was a contactee. And that's one of the rarest forms of this phenomena there is. I mean, those cases are so strange and so vivid in detail. It's astounding. And when people put pen to paper about those experiences, they're always a fascinated read. Uh, there that, are, I'm intrigued. There are also uncles that like to tell tall tales. Let's just how dare you, Michael? Well. How but dare you? Here's what I'm gonna say. I actually will say for someone who is so against the belief of aliens, the I love that it wasn't a spaceship and it was something like archaic, like a tent. Right. And yeah. That I can get behind. It's a and very... I love that Bill is not like a three-eyed gray green skinned yeah alien. yeah um, and if this you... is a true tale of high strangeness and like 100%. i said i'm in it for the stories and this is a good story of yeah. high strangeness and, but also i will say too i mean i love the way that it works that like people have a veil on them i mean if you if adele and i talk about that all the time what is, what is the difference between a psychic and a witch or a normal person i think it's that witches and psychics are more connected to the idea or they're more open so i I don't, I don't know, hearing that story. And then, you know, when you invite me back on Halloween for Halloween episodes, I can go further and talk about if you look at that, compare that to when people say that they were inducted into a coven of witches or met with wow. the devil. There's that yeah. weird meeting a tribe or meeting other people from another realm. I'm down for that. All right. Yeah. I love it. What do it. you think, Riley? The desert, tent spaceships, Psychic cats. I mean, first of all, I really would like to see a photo of that painting of the space cat. So. <laughs> yes, yes, we need space cat like photo. This Josh, whole thing is a spin drift concept album. This whole story. <laughs> okay, yeah, the cat is like this. Legend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the space cat that has like tentacle. It's a Marvel movie. Yes. Cat that's an alien. Yes. Uh, it's Chewbacca. It's Chewy in the comics. I can't remember what it's called in the in the. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's like either, you know, either he did some acid with a, a desert drifter that was making. <laughs> I love that version of it. It's very possible. Who came that. out in cardboard boxes like, check out my robot. <laughs> Ten, brother. You know, <laughs> but, looks a lot bigger on the inside, don't it? <laughs> but also, I don't know. I, I like that. I mean, I don't like it. It's not a fun idea, but I, I do think about that idea of like, earth as like a spirit prison planet like 
yeah like when you look at like how it is here and how we treat each other and how much suffering there is and how we just keep hitting our heads against like evolving as a species like sometimes it really does feel that way and like mm. if you think about like if there's like a there if there is like a i don't like the term like hell but like something like that it would have existed for a long time you know and and there would have been people or whatever beings that like gamed the system. And I think it would look sort of like what we have going on now. So, you know, with like a, an elite kind of ruling class and general systematic oppression. And I don't know, sometimes I, I wonder what the human experience on earth really is. Well, and a, di and a dictate that like the Buddha said, you know, life is suffering, you know, and, and there's, yeah. that's, there's no escaping that for anybody. Uh, on this planet we all suffer and so right. yeah there there is something to that that's samsara mm. that's the the, the the cosmic karmic wheel that we just keep mm. uncle larry come back come back from the other side and tell us what it all means yeah. and josh please do send us a picture of your space cat oh, yeah and most important. type that up i want to read it okay we got time for one more before we say good night to our dear listeners and mystic dylan this one is called The Time I Saw Two Alien Greys. Oh, shit. Ooh. Hey, BCC crew. My name is Genie, like Genie in a bottle. You can use my name. I love the show, and you keep me company while I'm working night shift uh, cleaning a haunted school. I should send some <laughs> stories about that sometime, but right now I want to tell you about the aliens I saw for Wet Hot Alien Summer 2. Awesome. Now... I don't tell many people about this because they never believe me when I tell them. Only my husband and kids have heard this story, and my dad knew, but he has passed away. I'm just going to jump right in, I guess. I grew up with my single father in a very small town in southeast Kansas around the same area as Pittsburgh, Kansas. If Michael knows where that is, I do. It is a small town. As well as uh, as well, but bigger than the one I grew up in. Yay for growing up in Kansas. Yes, and go gorillas. Anyway, my dad was not very concerned about doing things the normal way. As such, our sleeping arrangement was a love seat and a couch in the living room. I had a pretty cool non-conventional childhood. I slept on the love seat. And my dad had the bigger couch. They were positioned in an L shape where I could easily whoa L for L files. They were positioned in an L shape where I could easily see my dad on his couch. It was around I was it was around eighth grade for me, so I was about 13 or 14 years old. I woke up in the middle of the night and looked over toward my dad, and standing next to his couch were two gray aliens. Mm. I was instantly filled with terror and froze in fear. They were standing close to each other and one was taller than the other. The taller one was farthest away from me and seemed to be holding something in its hand. The smaller one was looking at whatever the taller one was holding, and the taller alien was using its other hand and pointing at something on the device it was holding as if to show the smaller one something on it. As to show them- Turn the, the battery around. Yeah. I'm pointing it in the wrong- positive. I'm pointing it correctly. <laughs> it's in the right- you never, I should have never given Turn you the magic around. rod. Never given you the magic wand. Um, they did not talk or make any noise. They were not gray or green, but more of a dark greenish gray color. And they were wearing long sleeved black jumpsuits. Oh, that dude, comes up that, a lot. It's legit. I froze for only a couple minutes before I decided that pulling my blanket over my head and hiding under it was the best course of action because Probably. to a child, the blanket can protect them from anything. So I slowly pulled it up over my head, trying not to let them know I was awake. I waited for another couple minutes, but I needed to know if the aliens were still out there. So I peeked out of a tiny hole in my blanket. They were both staring at me. No. And their eyes were yellow with black slitted pupils. Whoa, reptilians. That image is burned into my brain and still scares me to this day. And the next thing I remember is my dad waking me up to get ready for school in the morning. I immediately told him that he's, and he seemed to believe me, but he also was skeptical as well. I think because it scared him. 
I did try to tell other people, but they told me I must have been dreaming, and that offended me so much that I just stopped telling anyone. I know when I am asleep and when I'm awake, and I know when I am dreaming. I never thought I was awake when I wasn't and never thought I was asleep when I was awake, and I've never thought a dream was real. What the fuck? <laughs> then... Either the same day or the next day. It was so long ago, I can't remember exactly what day. Me and my friends were jumping on their trampoline, you know, as you do in rural Kansas, and we decided to take a break and lay down, and we saw something in the sky. It was something extremely reflective, or it was lit up, but it was small, and it zigzagged around the sky. Nothing back then could have moved like that. This is the early 2000s. So drones were not a thing yet, and there was no noise. After it flew around for a couple minutes like that, it shot off out of you so fast that it was hard to track it. Then, later that day around dusk, I was in the car with my dad, and on the way to the local gas station, which was only about a mile away from our house, I saw it again. I pointed it out to my dad and told him I saw it earlier in the day, and he looked at it and was intrigued by it, but unconcerned, kind of like when I told him about the aliens. I have seen a few other UFOs as well, but the most recent one was just last year when I was out with a couple of friends sitting by a fire at night. What And what seemed like every dog in town started barking and this light floated across the sky and it was pulsing as it flew there. There was no noise and it, as it went over either. I got a picture of it. Boys, check your texts. Everybody else, check the Instagram. At the yeah, that's right. Club. I got a picture of it. And it must have been moving faster than it looked because in the picture it, lo it looks long, but it looked like a circle to the naked eye. I only recently heard about other people seeing taller grays with small grays, and my mind was blown because it is also said that the taller ones are in charge or smarter than the smaller ones, and the taller alien was the one showing the smaller one something. I would love to know what you guys think about this as I've never talked about it with anyone who believes in this kind of stuff and would like to know your thoughts. Even if this does not get read on air, I hope you enjoyed my experience. Well, guess what? It did. Thank you for being amazing and creating a space where people can tell their stories without judgment. Jeannie, you had a classic, you had a C-A-E, wow. a classic alien encounter. I mean, that's, that's what it just is. That's crazy, it dude. Sounds like <clears throat> these were the reptilian style grays that we hear about. Judging from the yellow slitted eyes, maybe that's what their eyes look like under those black almond lenses that sometimes people report them having yeah. covering their eyes. Um, Sounds like you had some missing time there, too. Like you just woke up and everything yeah. was back to normal. Man, yeah. classic. I don't know. Might want to get regressed. Maybe not. Definitely want to get seems regressed. Seems like you remember this stuff. Um, but yeah, sounds like classic alien. Account. I mean, I don't know. You've heard this show. Fits right in with shit we talk about. Uh, Mystic Dylan, what's your take? I'm all about reptilians. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there all you go. about them Dracos. I'm all about them, you know. Um, I I don't know. I I I definitely I hate to like not believe when I definitely have seen things that I know no one else would believe if I were to say I saw this. Yeah, you know. Um, and the thing too, I think. The more that I listen to your show and talk to Adela and like do my research, it's like we do have like if you look at old deities and old civilizations, um, there's like the Celts, the Tuath Dedanin, they were the original race. Uh, you have the ancient Egyptian deities, and they tell of being on Earth and then kind of just like noping out. So uh. who knows if if you know when we were reading the story before, it's like like bill you know maybe bill did live on earth and he was like you know what y'all be closed off i'm gonna go beep 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 beep, beep up to like <laughs> i gotta go so, smoke my cancer-free cigarettes yeah yeah no i'm not here about that like and and who knows maybe reptilians or or aliens or whatever are are a race that that have a connection to earth in some way but still have a preference in wherever they're from Man. I don't know, but we believe you saw what you saw. We just don't know what it is. Yeah, I guess I it's as good as ours, Janine. Right, Riley? Yeah. She's shaking, she's shaking just, your head up there. No, so scary. I just thought yeah. the idea of yeah. the things watching you sleeping is just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, you know, I hope it's not too much, uh, you know, too traumatic of an experience, but also like a little bit I'm jealous, you know, because like, mm. don't you want to see? I'm not. You want, like, I do don't want to be horrified for the rest of your life, but like, if I could see an alien with my own two eyes, like, yes, like, I want that. It's crazy. So, I don't know. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. yeah, that's they wild, out man. There. All wow. right. Well, what a great batch of wet, hot alien summer L files. We appreciate everybody who wrote in. Uh, if yours didn't get read, it could still get read in a future L files episode. So hang tight. Um, okay. It's time to say good night to Mystic Dylan. We're going to go do some Patreon shout outs. So stick around for that. But in the meantime, Dylan of the Mystic Realm, where can people find you and your books? One more time. So you can find me on the Instagram at Mystic Dylan Official. Um, you can book a reading with me uh, at mysticdylan.com. Um, you can visit Old World with the old em- with e- Emporium. emporium.com uh, and also follow the shop, the Old World Emporium. Um, you never, do you ever, has anyone ever seen Spice World? That's my favorite alien encounter. I have not actually. <laughs> okay, well, but people listening will know exactly what you're talking. It's about. a docu. It's a docu drama movie, so it's definitely very real. And they are visited by aliens. I so I it. guess I, I have no choice but to believe that. Uh, but Amazing. thank you so much for having me. Oh Dylan, yes, thank you for gracing us with your presence, man. We always love hearing what you have to say and your vast knowledge. And and yeah, and I love yeah. being here, and I love all of you. So thank you, thank Dylan. You, can Dylan. people book readings with you uh, non locally? In other words, can you yes, do it? I do phone and Skype. Uh, I do phone and Skype readings. So yes, book a right. reading. You can <laughs> do right. anything today over the computer. And listen to the Witch in the Medium. With yes. a Lola Vine, my nice. BFF. Well, it's a pleasure as always. Mystic Dylan, we're going to wave you out as you disappear into the ether. Uh, we'll see you next time on BCC. The rest of you awesome. stick around for some Patreon shout outs. Thanks, Bye. Mystic Dylan. Bye. Awkward pause while yes. Dylan slowly vanishes, works his magic spells. Bye. Bye. And bye. <laughs> Still here. Bye, He's still here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, uh, all right, guys. It's time for some Patreon shout outs. This is everybody who joined the Patreon since our last episode, L Files episode. We're gonna get it uh quick and dirty here. So, right. boys, you know what to do. Uh, we would like to thank Jennifer Shepherdson. Thank you, Morgan Gold. Thank you, Brandon Crutzley. Thank you, Brandon. Proton Crosser. Thank you, Proton. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Ryan Middledorf. Uh, thank thanks, you. Ryan. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, Kenneth Millam. Thank you very much for your generous pledge. Uh, Hannah Royal. Thank you. Ryan Mitchell. Thank you. Ashley Wilkinson. Thanks. Make His Magic. Thank you. Alex Ebens. Thank you. Sarah S. Alves. Thanks, Sarah. Kevin DeVos. Thank you, Kevin. Josh Harrison. Thanks, Josh. Bailey Meadows. Thank you. Alex Whitcomb. Thank you. Megan Brennistall. Thanks, Megan. David. Thank you, David. John Leslie. Thank you. Beal Zabub. Oh, Ooh, thank you, Beal Zabub. Derek Talon. Thank you. William Rutledge. Thank you. Eric F. Thank you. Nep Nep. Thank you, Nep Nep. Uh, I'm going to assume you're an Ewok, Nep Nep. Thank you, and thank you for what you did on the Battle of Endor. Um, Kylie Wagner. Thank you, Kylie. Serena White. Thank you. Cascade Scola. Thank you. Logan Barnes. Thanks, Logan. Gwen Cornell. Thank you. Brandon Lowry. Thank you. Curtis Miller. Thank you. Courtney Morales. Thank you, Courtney. And Joshua Bachelet. Thanks, Joshua. Thank you, everybody who joined the Patreon. We appreciate you guys. Welcome yeah, to we the do. other side. Uh, for the rest of you who haven't tried it out yet, give it a shot. Join for five bucks. See if you like it. And see if you want to stick around. 
157 other episodes, and you get to watch this one instead of just listening to it. You get to see how uh, sweaty I get, and you get to see glimpses of my toys and comics uh, dark darkly in the background. So it's fun. It's real fun, guys. Um, All right, boys, anything to plug before we say goodbye? No, I don't think so. Great. Me neither. Okay, everyone, we'll see you next week. Until then, good night. Thank you, and go get regressed. That's right. All right. Bye.